Could you prescribe metformin or let primary care handle that? Here are several articles on metformin which together put more pressure on us to either prescribe it or assure that it's being aggressively considered and managed by another team member. Hi, Jim Phelps here for the Psychopharmacology Institute. Officially, this quick take is about metformin for patients taking clozapine, but let's look at metformin more broadly. You wouldn't likely be surprised to hear that among patients starting clozapine, those who were also given metformin or were already on it had less weight gain than the clozapine alone group. But you might not expect the numbers at one year. No weight gain at all in the clozapine metformin group versus a 4.7 kilogram increase for clozapine alone. A 2016 meta-analysis found that metformin was more effective in preventing antipsychotic-induced weight gain in first episode patients than in patients who had already gained weight. And that weight gain can happen fast. One study found that the average weight gain in the first three months of antipsychotic treatment was three and a half kilograms. So if you're going to prescribe metformin, these data suggest you should do it very early, maybe even starting it almost concomitantly with antipsychotics that are notorious for weight gain, like olanzapine, risperidone, and quetiapine. But many psychiatric clinicians are understandably hesitant to prescribe metformin. It's a scope of practice issue and a relationship with primary care issue. And of course, there are non-medication alternatives for weight control, and those, of course, should be vigorously used with good motivational interviewing. Well, here's one more prod toward getting your weight management act together. The TRIO-BD study, a randomized trial of metformin in treatment-resistant bipolar depression. It's small and it needs replication, but the implications are huge. This study was led by a former primary care doc who later trained in psychiatry, Dr. Cynthia Calkin. She and her colleagues' hypothesis was that insulin resistance contributes to treatment resistance in bipolar depression. So all 45 research participants in this study had insulin resistance as defined by fasting glucose and insulin levels, and the authors compared outcomes for patients who converted, who no longer met criteria for insulin resistance, versus non-converters. Half the patients randomized to metformin converted versus one patient on placebo. Among the converters, Depression scores on the Montgomery Asbury Depression Rating Scale, the MADRIS, were significantly lower at six months, with an effect size of 1.5. That's huge. Interestingly, anxiety scores on the Hamilton Anxiety Scale were also significantly lower for the converters, with an effect size there of 1.0. Now, this is a preliminary trial. There were only 11 converters. Nevertheless, I hope it's making you think hard about how to manage weight gain with your patients. Imagine if by inducing insulin resistance, we are inducing treatment resistance, at least in bipolar depression. That's an iatrogenic disaster. Well, one more finding that might be reassuring as you contemplate using metformin for patients at risk of metabolic syndrome, in Dr. Calkin's study, Loose stool was the most common side effect in 40% of the metformin group, but also in 32% of the placebo group, which is not statistically different, nor was any other side effect, including nausea or vomiting. For more on this, perhaps it's time to review the prescribing information on metformin if you're not already routinely using it.